So let's rank all the films I rewatched for the month of September 2022. Bad days and entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to us the Big D, back again with another ranking. Today I'm going to be ranking all the flicks I rewatched for the month of September 2022. This consists of 28 films, and like before, I'm going to try and go rapid fire real quickly through the first uh, 23 of them, and I'll be back to do my thoughts on the top five, okay? So I'm going to try and go real quickly on this. Some I wanted to watch just for fun and what have you. Some, and well, they've just kind of went downhill you know, for me. Some that I wanted to watch. Well, I'll explain as I get to go through them, okay? If you're ready, let's get on with this ranking. Sit back, relax, and here we go. Number 28 is Grease 2 from 1980. This film was formerly a guilty pleasure of mine, but after rewatching it, it's, I've lost a little more interest in it. The cast is okay and what have you, even with some of the cast from the first film being back. Some of the music isn't quite great either, even though I like a couple of songs. The one that I like the most was Love Will Turn Back the Hands of Time. If you haven't seen my review of this, I did a review of this last year, I believe. Check it out if you want to. But I'll stick with the original or even Grease Live. Number 27 is Hatchet 3 from 2013. And this film is pretty bloody in ways. I mean, we have Daniel Harris back. It was really good to see Zach Gilligan from Gremlins in this. Plus several others. Including Caroline Williams. From um, Stepfather 2, Leprechaun 3, and a few others. Yeah, and the film's still, well, factually good. And then I did see the other two. You'll see where those went up. I didn't watch Victor Crowley again, though. But still, Hatchet 3 is pretty good in some ways, not completely. Number 26 is Resident Evil Retribution from 2012. This is the next to last Resident Evil film. I reviewed all those. If you haven't seen my review of this, you gotta check it out. I'm sorry this is so low, but I like it, though. Uh, I forgot to mention that in my video. I don't hate this movie, but I do like it, though. It's good and action-packed. It brought back some of the characters we saw from earlier films. It didn't quite bring back everyone from the previous film, though. But still, it provides some pretty good action. Number 25 is Jason X from 2001. Uh, this film's a guilty pleasure. I do like it. In some ways, I mean, with Jason Voorhees being in space, yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool in some ways. I mean, it does have its moments, but I do have a little fun watching this and what have you. Number 24 is Spider-Man, or The Amazing Spider-Man, for 1977. This is the pilot telefilm for the short-lived Spider-Man TV series that ran from 1978 to 1979. Full series is available on YouTube. The film's not too bad. I know it's a shame they don't have any actual Spider Man villains in the series, though. But overall, it's good in some ways. Again, you might want to look into this if you never knew this even existed. Number 23 is Vampire Suck from, tw from 2010. Uh, this is one of the main. Spoofs of Twilight and what have you. This is the one I'm mostly familiar with from directed by the undynamic duo of Friedberg and Seltzer Bros. Day movie, Epic movie, Meet the Spartans, and Disaster movie. I've reviewed all those. I was going to review it this month, but since I'm completely booked, I'll have to say this for another day. This one's okay. It's not really great though, but it's okay. At least I prefer to watch this one. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it. Just don't get mad at me, okay? Number 22 is Star Trek Nemesis from 2002. This was the final film to feature the Next Generation cast. It was to be another one, but this film unfortunately didn't do too well at the box office. I don't want to get into too much detail. I will make up for last month and review this possibly next month. Stay tuned, details to follow. Number 21 is Fear from 1996. 
This is the film that introduced me to Reese Witherspoon. Mark Wahlberg's in this movie. This is a pretty underrated suspense thriller. I do love this movie. It's pretty good. I definitely got to review this someday. Again, it's got um, William Pearson before CSI. Alyssa Milano's in this. Yeah. Fear is pretty underrated, but I like it. Number 20 is Resident Evil Apocalypse from 2004. This film's pretty awesome in ways. I mean, this was the first Resident Evil film to open at number one. Well, it has its moments in life. If you haven't seen my review of this film, check it out. It's the second film in the franchise. And, well, again, it's not as bad as I, well, most people say, but hey, don't worry. You don't have to take my word for it. Number 19 is Star Trek Insurrection from 1998. I have seen this film before, but it's been a long time. The next to last film with the Next Generation crew. This film did okay. I mean, despite it got mixed reviews and what have you. And I will say, I'm not going to get into too much. I will review this next month possibly as well. Along with First Contact which and Generations, like I said, since I delayed it from last month. Again, details to follow in a future in maybe the schedule for, my, for next month, okay? Number 18 is Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 from 2009. This is kind of a mixed bag for me. While it does have some pretty brutal violent kills and why have you, this, well, kind of went a little downhill, but I have some respect for it. Not a whole lot. Well, I like Rob Zombie's first Halloween, but this one just, again, is a mixed bag, though. Number 17 is Hatchet from 2006. This film's pretty brutal and bloody and what have you. I mean, we have Kane Hodder, who recently played Jason the most, to play Victor Crowley and his dad. Yeah. I like, I have some respect for the Hatchet films. I've seen all of them. This film's not too bad. It does have some odd characters and what have you, though. But still, it's pretty good. Number 16 is Blade Trinity from 2004. It's been a long time since I last saw the Blade films. And I had only seen this film one time. I decided to rewatch it, and well, it has grown me a little more, but not much, though. Wesley Snipes is good, and we have Ryan Reynolds and Jessica Biel in this. I'll try and review this next year. Hopefully, if, if Marvel Studios has released that Blade reboot and what have you, You'll see the other two films on this ranking as well. Number 15 is Resident Evil Afterlife from 2010. This film's pretty awesome. I like the cool 3D effects and what have you, the action, choreography and what have you. This film's pretty good. I know Resident Evil isn't really that big and what have you with horror fans, maybe in some ways, but still... It's got some pretty good ads and what have you. If you haven't seen my review of this, check it out. Number 14 is DuckTales the Movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp from 1990. This film's really good. As much as I like the DuckTales TV series itself, it's just like seeing um, an anime Indiana Jones, but only with the DuckTales gang. It's pretty good. If you haven't seen my review of this, check it out. You can also check out my TV log for the original series as well. Number 13 is Hatchet 2 from 2010. This is my favorite of the Hatchet series. I love this. It's got some pretty funny moments. The characters, again, are a little, well, you know. But overall, it does have some pretty cool kills and what have you. Some are pretty bloody and gruesome. Number 12 is The Mummy Returns from 2001. It's been a long time since I last saw this and its predecessor, which we'll see where that winds up. Although I failed to watch The Scorpion King, though. I watched these two. Well, just unfortunately, before Peacock dropped them, they had The Scorpion King as well. And no, I didn't watch Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. That comes okay. It's not as good as this one or the first one. I definitely got to review this and its predecessor one day. I love the performances we got from the cast. It's pretty cool. Except for the animation they used on the Scorpion King was a little, eh. I'll explain what I review is. 
Number 11 is R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour. Don't think about it from 2007. I love this movie. It's pretty good. Emily Osment's really good. I really enjoyed everyone's performance. I recently rewatched this again not so long ago, so you'll see it on my rewatches for October as well. Don't know where it'll be, though, but it'll be on there. But anyway, if you haven't seen this film, check it out. I did a review of this last year. Number 10 is Resident Evil Extinction from 2007. This movie's pretty action-packed. I like how um, Allison, the others go to, um, well, the Missouri Las Vegas later on. Yeah, I forgot to bring that up in my review of it. But this movie was pretty darn awesome. Thanks for making my review for this the most viewed video on my YouTube on here last month. Thanks. This movie's action-packed. I love it. Number nine is Blade from 1998. Again, I hadn't seen the Blade franchise in I don't know how long, but I'm glad to have seen this once again. Wesley Snipes really cool as a titular character. I will review this and the sequels next year, perhaps, okay? So be prepared for that. Again, it's action packed. I have come to like it a little more than what I did before. Number eight is Resident Evil from 2002. This film is the one that started it all. It's action-packed. It's got some pretty good kills and what have you. I did review this from earlier this year. And, of course, I recently reviewed the sequels last month. So, anyway. I like the performances from Mia Jovovich, Michelle Rodriguez. Everyone was pretty good. Number seven is Resident Evil The Final Chapter from 2016. Now, although it came to us in 2017, this is the final original series, uh, well, film and what have you. I gotta say, it was pretty good. It's my favorite as of, well, for now, but it might change later on down the road. But it does have some pretty cool action tag moments and what have you. Kind of does leave us hanging on by a thread a little at the end, but overall, this film's not too bad. Number six is Blade 2 from 2002. Now, this film I thought was even more fun or bloodier than the first one, but hey, you don't have to take my word for it. I like this film. This is one I saw a few times more than the first one. Wesley Snipes, again, good as the titular character. I really think this is an awesome vampire flick. Again, I will review this next year, along with the first and the third film and what have you. If if Marvel does stay true to keep their word and give us that new Blade reboot next year. But I don't know. Even if they don't, then I'll still review these anyway. Whew. Yeah, I'm do going real fast this time. Huh. Yeah, I hope you've been enjoying this so far. Boy, I got through that in no time. More faster than what I had anticipated. Well... That's 23 down, but there's still five movies left. The top five. I hope you're ready for them. I know I am. So, stay tuned, because I'm about to give them to you right now. Are you ready? Good. Here we go. Number five is... The Ring, another film from 2002. Now, I've watched this several times in my view. I love it. I won't get into too much detail since I will be reviewing that later on this month for the film's 20th anniversary. Gore Verbinski does a great job in directing this. This is still just a little bit before he started doing the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. But I'm going to say, I really enjoyed it. Naomi Watts was really good in this. Um... Ryan Henderson, David Dorfman, Brian Cox, and even young David Chase, who, of course, that same year took part in voice and half of Disney's duo of Lilo and Stitch. Anyway, I think The Ring is really good. I've only seen the second one one time. I recently saw the third one, Rings, for the first time. You'll see that on the first time watches ranking when it comes up tomorrow, okay? But The Ring isn't too bad, though. Now, coming in at number four is Pacific Rim, 
Pinocchio from 1940, the original Disney animated classic itself. I've seen its recent live action version. We'll see where that winds up on the first time watches ranking when it comes up. I think this film's pretty good. It's not really one of my top favorite Disney animated films of all time, since I've only seen it a few times. But I really think it's a very fun movie. All the characters are really good, like Pinocchio and Jappel, Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, if you haven't seen my review of it, check it out. But anyway, the original Pinocchio is really good. I really do love it. And it's a pretty good anime feature. Now, coming in at number three is... Beverly Hills Cop from 1984. I love this movie. This is easily one of my favorite A. Murphy films. I really enjoy this. Um, I, well, I, I can't remember which member my family had. We had the soundtrack for it, which had some pretty good songs, including um, The He Is On by the late, great Glenn Frey from the Eagles. Of course, some Axel Foley theme song's pretty good, too. Again, it's a great buddy cop film and what have you. I mean, before Lethal Weapon, there was Beverly Hills Cop. I love it. I'm not going to get into too much detail of it. I will review that film next year because I hear we're finally going to get that long away fourth film. We'll see what happens. You will see the sequels in the first time watches ranking when it comes up. Beverly Hills Cop, it's awesome. I do love it. Now coming in at number two is... The Mummy from 1999. It's been some time since I last saw this one, but I think this film's pretty awesome. Brendan Fraser's good. Rachel Weisz is good. I gotta say, this was a very good film. Uh, I was going to try to review the original with Boris Karloff, but, well, you will have to wait for another day. Uh, don't worry, I will review that. Now, I will review this in The Mummy Returns later on down the road, I promise. But this film's so action-packed and adventurous, I really did enjoy The Mummy for what it had to offer. Definitely. Um, Imhotep is definitely a great villain, why have you? Absolutely great. So anyway, The Mummy from 1999, absolutely superb. And my number one, and my top pick, number one, rewatch of September, 2022. This was kind of last minute, but I managed to watch it before the month was over with. That film is none other than John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. Now, you will see this on the rewatches ranking for this month as well. Anyway, I love this movie. You don't have to hear too much. I recently re-reviewed the film last year, along with the second one, which I watched this month, and the third film. I'll be watching a few more Halloweens, not all of them, because some of them aren't available on streaming anymore. A few of them are, but I am going to be, and I will be re-watching the new sequels leading up to Halloween Ends when that comes around later this month, and yes, you will get a review of it. Anyway, the original Halloween, you can't go wrong with that. Jamie Lee Curtis is awesome. John Carpenter's score and direction, very good. Not sad about it. So there you have it. That's my September 2022 rewatches ranking. What did you think? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Next time, I'll be giving to you, giving to y'all the September first time watches ranking so thank you for watching and if you like this consider watching some of the videos for my reviews for some of the videos i just mentioned in the upper left hand corner is the review i, I did on the original pinocchio the upper right hand corner is my review of resident evil the final chapter and the bottom left hand corner is my review of resident evil extinction and the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. 
Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.